Hey there, uh, welcome to my February 6th, uh, 2023 homework help video all about dividing decimals. I really felt inclined to do a, a new updated version of dividing decimals because not only do I have a few new strategies up my sleeve, but also because I wanna be homework specific this week because this is typically a skill or a concept that my fifth graders in the past have really struggled with. So I wanted to take a few minutes of my time and really try my best to kind of break down some strategies to better support your fifth grader at home with this week's homework. So there's a few different strategies that I'm going to uh, show you now. These strategies are not new to your fifth graders. I have been teaching these strategies in math class. So one is using a place value chart and one is using what the homework calls a vertical form, what I call a standard algorithm, or as some parents and grandparents at home might call the normal old school way of dividing. So I want to uh, look at a problem with you, show you two different ways that you could solve, and then I wanna kind of give you a preview into the work that we're doing the rest of the week. Um, and also, since you are watching this, um, a little uh, heads up that next week, um, I will be testing the students on decimals. Uh, so far in this unit, we have um, compared decimals using greater than, less than, equal to. We have rounded decimals. We've added and subtracted decimals. We've multiplied decimals. And now this week we're dividing decimals. So this test will cover all of those concepts that I've taught over the course of the past month. So without any further ado, sorry for talking so much, uh, let's get into the first problem of our homework. So the problem is uh, asking us to do um, 1.05 divided by three. Now your fifth grader would tell you, that's not the right way to actually read that number. I want them to really improve their vocabulary. So this number 1.05 is actually one and five hundredths because five is in the hundredths place. Another way that you could say this word is 105 hundredths because there's 105 in the last digits in the hundredths place, okay? So let's talk about how we could solve this. The homework gives us um, some grid paper for a standard algorithm and a place value chart as well. So I'm actually just going to close my face for a minute. There we go. And I'm going to create my screen to match yours. So we have zero and five hundredths divided by three. So in a place value chart, we have the ones place and the tenths place and the hundredths place. For time purpose, I'll just use abbreviations. The first step that we're going to do is actually put this dividend into our place value chart. So there's one in the hundredths place, zero in the tenths place, and five in the hundredths place. So what I'm going to ask my students to do is to make groups of three. So if I have one, one, can I make a group of three? Uh, no, I can't. There's only one, one. So what I'm going to do is rename this one one as 10 tenths. So there's actually 10 tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tenths make up one. So now I'm going to ask myself, how many groups of three can I make if I have 10 tenths? So one, two, three, here's a group of three. One, two, three, here's a group of three. One, two, three, here's a group of three. So I made three groups of three in the tenths place. Now, for those of you who are like Bowers lady, I have no idea what you're talking about. Show it to me in a way that I might understand to help my child. So this is what we bring in the old school method, the way that 
I was taught and you parents and grandparents and guardians were taught. So we have one, one. What is one, one divided by three? You know, you can't do it. Notice here, I wasn't able to make any groups of three in the ones place. That's why I put an X here. So then when I renamed them, I then had 10 tenths. I then asked you how many groups of three can I make? And we figured out that that was three groups of three. So I circled nine. And if you noticed, hopefully you picked up on this, there was one extra there. Meaning this left over here, there's one tenth left. Now going back to my place value chart, what do I do with this one tenth? Do I forget about it and move on? No! What we are gonna wanna do is include it in my hundredths place. So I asked my students, how many hundredths make up one tenth? And they would tell you 10. So for those of you who use the old school method, when you bring down this five, you're left with 15. Oh, and look here. In the hundredths place, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundredths. Next step is to identify how many groups of three can I make in the hundredths place? So let's count. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. I made five groups of three in the hundredths place. Five times three is 15. And I'm left with zero leftovers. Now, if you remember from back in the day, um, when you divide a decimals, the decimal would go right above it in our answer. So if we were to use the place value chart, we would say that there were zero ones, three tenths, and five hundredths. So these are two different ways that you could have solved this problem, using a place value chart or using a standard algorithm. All right, let's take a look at the next problem because this is a little challenging. All right, so this time around, I'm not going to draw a place value chart. And the reason is because, in my opinion, uh, trying to make groups of 60, that's going to take me a, a really long time to do. So sometimes that strategy isn't always the best choice. So let's try this in a standard algorithm. So we are asked to divide. 714 hundredths divided by 60. Okay, so picture a place value chart in your head, right? If I have seven ones, can I make a group of 60? Absolutely not, that wouldn't be able to, that, that, that wouldn't work at all. But what about if I have 71 tenths? If I have 71, can I make a group of 60? The answer here is yes, I can make one group of 60. Now I need to find the difference. How many uh, place value disks would be left? How many tenths would be left after making a group of 60? Well, that would be 11 would be left. All right, and so those 11 that are left then actually get moved to the hundredths place, making it become 114 hundredths. So now out of 114 hundredths, how many group of six groups of 60 could I make? Well, I know uh, multiples of 60 are 60, 120, 180. I couldn't do two groups of 60. That would be too much. So I'm kind of stuck with just one group of 60 here as well. All right, so 1 times 60 is 60. My remainder here would be 54. 
But what do I do with that remainder? I don't have a remainder of zero. I actually have a remainder of 54. So what my students come to realize or learn at the beginning of this unit is that this number, 714 hundredths, actually has the same value as this number here. It has the exact same value. The value doesn't change. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give myself zero thousandths. And then I'm going to rewrite this as 540 thousandths. Now, because Mrs. Bowers knows her multiples of 6, I can figure out my multiples of 60. So I have 60, 120, 180, 240, 300, 360, 420, 480, 540. How many groups of 60 can I make with 540? The answer there, my friends, is 7, because 7 times 60 is 540, and I'm left with a remainder of 0. And our quotient is here up top. Our final answer is 0 and 117 thousandths. All right, so on the next page, um, you'll see question number three and question number four. These are review questions from previous, <clears throat> excuse me, from previous concepts and units that I've taught. So number three is showing you a tape diagram with numbers in it. So I want you to write a statement that represents that tape diagram. I see 12s and I see 23s. So maybe I might ask myself, what's the total? What's the total here? So you could figure that out by looking at the tape diagram and counting up how many 23s and how many 12s equals our total. So I might say that there are, let's count these up. One, two, three, four groups of 23. And then I would want to also include the groups of 12. One, two, three, four. So if it's four groups of 23 and four groups of 12, your job is to find the answer to this expression. Problem number four is a word problem about my friend Ryan practicing guitar. He practiced for 25 minutes every day after school. There are 190 school days in a year. This year, he wants to practice for 375 more minutes than he did last year. For how many minutes does Ryan want to practice guitar this year? So with the read, draw, write process, I'm always looking for you to draw a math picture that matches the words. So if Ryan practiced guitar for 25 minutes every day for 190 days, how many minutes was that? And then he wants to practice 375 more minutes than he did last year. I just, you know, I'm using the letter A. It's just a random letter. It's called a variable. A variable is used to replace an unknown number. Okay? So this is ultimately what we need to find out is how many minutes will he practice this year? So first step is to figure out how much he practiced last year and then add 375 minutes to get our total. I'll give you guys uh, some freedom to try that out on your own. All right, one more problem that I wanna look at together before I send you off to finish your homework as best you can independently is the next page. Um, it's labeled lesson 23. So I, although I did not teach you that lesson today, Monday, I will be teaching this lesson to you on Wednesday the 8th. So here's a little peek at what we're learning. 
I'm going to teach you on Wednesday how you can divide decimals by using your knowledge of fractions. We did such a great job dividing fractions that I think you might find this to be really, really helpful in a really quicker and easier way to divide decimals. Now, this only works when the divisor and the dividend both are decimals. I'm going to first want to rewrite these as fractions first. Our first number is 28 tenths. Our second number is 1 tenth. And then I'm going to ask you just to divide across the numerators first. So 28 divided by 1 is 28. And then we'll do it across the denominators. 10 divided by 10 is 1. This denominator will tell you what unit we're in. In this case, it's 1s. There's 28 1s, which rewritten in standard form, 28 1s is just 28. All right, so step one was to write it as a fraction. Step two was divide across. Step three was to rewrite it as a whole or standard form number. Guys, I hope that you found this somewhat helpful in accomplishing and completing your homework for the week. Don't forget, this is due on Friday, February 10th. Thanks for joining me. Good luck. I'll see you all soon.